Okay, guys, let's do a super tornado. I'm going to do a Hermit. <laughs> I'm bubble. <laughs> well, whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, Frankie's got the weather we got. Wait a minute. Well, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, Frankie's got the weather, whether or not. There it is. It was a wintry walk to school in Park Village, but they're a hardy breed in these parts. Well, the demolish says we had to go anyway. We hadn't much a choice in the matter, but sure. It's a I cold, it's a cold journey to school this morning. Oh, good, you wouldn't belong getting frost, but... It's nice to look at, but tough to live in, and there's no respite yet. Tonight, weather warnings remain in place right across the northwest. In the beginning, my life was idyllic. Days spent with my family in the patch. The sunlight warming my skin. Idyllic. Until they came without warning, cruel hands dragging me roughly from my dreams into a wheeled box. Good morning. Welcome to the Comediological Report. That is a show that I, Joey Only, host and have come up with. Comediology is a science, an exact science that I created. It's the study of comedy and meteorology. Comedy plus meteorology equals comediology. The weather is funny. Business is your show to complain about how much the weather sucks in Canada. Uh, so I say I'm your host, Joey Only. You're listening to us Saturday mornings on Seafair 88.7 FM in Prince George. And you're listening to us on Mondays at noon in Winnipeg on 95.9 CKUW. Welcome all you listeners. And for everybody on the YouTube channel, uh, you radio listeners can always find the video version and see our beautiful faces. If you go to my channel, Joey Only, Caribou Weather Dude, where this week I've been posting lots of videos about my travels around in the wilderness. I've been... Uh, Working in a logging camp about 200 kilometers west of Quenelle, as you may have heard last week on the show. And uh, I was just telling Brandon Houck, one of our co-hosts here, today we went and looked at some patches of uh, old forestry blocks that were laid out in the same manner that we're cutting right now. And uh, how successful the forest regeneration has been in those blocks. What we're doing is uh, cutting 40 by 60 meter patches in the uh, forest. And uh, what it's allowing it to do is, A, provide some uh, uh, retention in the soil, uh, Cooperate, you know, like a, the whole Darwin idea that uh, everything's in competition. Uh, when you spend enough time walking the forest, you realize that no, there's a lot of cooperation actually going on. So these small blocks are allowing that uh, cooperation to continue, and it's uh, it was nice to see uh, the health of the forest. So that's what I'm doing right now, laying out blocks and timber cruising, counting trees, and and uh, you know. And, some of the things we do in our day is if uh, we come across something like a wolf's den, we can flag that off and there will be no cutting in that area. So a lot of what we do is uh, provide environmental safety measures and, and valves. So it's uh, totally wonderful to be able to do this kind of work right now for me and uh, feed my family. I'm on the show right now with uh, co-host Frankie McDonald and co-founder of the show. We started the show back in January. It's been a radio show now since uh, May. And uh, we're still at it and probably going to be at it for a while to come. We got to also down in uh, Brooks, Alberta, our radio weatherman, Brandon Houck. And then also another radio host down in Houston, Texas, our friend Trey Campbell's come on. I can't wait to find out from him uh, what new station he's working at. But first... Frankie! Always first, Frankie McDonald. How you doing this week? I seen that the trailer park right boys. so far. It's cold old tide in Sydney, Nova Scotia. As of right now, it's cold old tide in my area, which is Sydney, Nova Scotia. It's clear skies, but it's cold old. on Wednesday after it was raining old tide in my area. It's been snow squalls in Ontario, Michigan, around the and western Michigan. It's been snow squalls in same with Cleveland, Ohio, and all these places because strong northwest winds and the Great Lakes are very warm and the air is cold. That triggering a lot of snow squalls in Great Lakes region. As of right now, it brings lots of thunderstorms in southern states. There's a whole lot of thunderstorms going on in Amazon rainforest and places like that. There's a lot of stormy weather going up, lots of rain going up in Norway and all those places. In Australia, it's getting warmer. Australia, New Zealand's getting warmer. It's 
you're getting lots of rain in Vancouver, British Columbia, Victoria, British Columbia, surrounding areas. And in Western United States, they're going to get sauna on the wind soon. What about uh, the west of the East Coast? Like, what's the winter projection? When do you think winter is coming, Frankie, for you guys proper? Some in up in Ontario could be second half of November. And, could, and there's, there's a hybrid fall winter months in eastern United States in December and eastern east coast of Canada. It could be fall winter hybrid months. Yeah, it's what we've been seeing here. We've had snow off and on, but now it's pretty, it's warmed up pretty nicely here. You know, I'm probably 200 kilometers, 300 kilometers. No, I don't know from Prince George. Somehow, you know, we have seen some warmer weather this week. I'm at 1,400 meters of elevation, so if it's going to snow somewhere, we're going to see it here. Uh, Prince George, Saturday, you're looking at 1 degree, 30% chance of showers, and minus 2 at night. Not a whole lot of play between your high and low. Uh, Sunday, high of 2, a mix of sun and cloud, minus 3 at night. Monday, chance of flurries, 60% chance of flurries. That is nighttime, minus 6, chance of rain showers or flurries. You had that awful freezing rainstorm this week, Prince George, and I hate to imagine more of that could be in store. Uh, chance of flurries hovering around zero degrees on Tuesday, minus seven at night, 60% chance of flurries. We are into a pattern of that sort of weather. Frankie, what do you think about uh, West Coast pattern? It's going to get really cold next week, going all the way down to California. It's a much bigger thing. Hey, I seen uh, your tornado siren video this week. It was uh, admired and watched by the Trailer Park Boys. Uh, tell me about that. Yes, it was a great one. I just did another video the guy acting like a bear. Okay, guys, we're going to do a guy acting like a bear. Thanks for watching Frank Dow. So you had Bubbles doing, uh, have you met the Trailer Park Boys before? They are in Sydney, Nova Scotia in 2014. I never met them in person. Well, they sure seem to know you, and they called you a legend, Frankie, and you are that. You're up to 269,000 subscribers. Yeah. You can find them, Dogs and Wolves, Frankie McDonald. And my TikTok, how many and views my TikTok has? How many followers? I got 553.8 thousand followers on my TikTok. That's half a million. That's a lot of followers, Frankie. You know, I'm I'm all impressed because I'm up to 857 subscribers on my YouTube channel. I'd sure like to, you know, have a couple more, but uh, it'll be – I'll never have as many subscribers as Frankie McDonald. That means I'm getting a lot of followers on Instagram. Your legend grows, my friend. Well, I'll stick around, Frankie, and we'll talk to you more in the hour. We'll uh, switch quickly over to Brandon Houck, though, our radio weatherman in Brooks, Alberta. And there's lots of stories to talk about. I mean, first of all, you got the Northern Lights behind you. So tell me about that amazing show that happened last night that we were clouded over in British Columbia and didn't get a chance to see. Yeah, it makes my hair look green, doesn't it? Uh, so, yeah, we had an incredible... Here behind me, let me move. No, it still looks right. Here, so then I can... <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. So as you see here, this is the Aurora Borealis show that we had earlier this morning. Absolutely incredible show. It was like watching a fire. Someone stoke a fire and it just goes, it kind of dances around. And it did that all morning long. We had to, we were, uh, they were thinking of a big Aurora show this weekend, but it didn't materialize. But it decided to show up last night instead. So that was, as I say, probably one of the best Aurora shows I've ever seen and probably maybe just a little better uh, from the one we saw in October there. So uh, October, I think they uh, recorded a Cape 8, something like that. So, yeah, it went all night last night. And when I got up this morning, it was still dancing in the sky and right up until the sun went uh, came up this morning. It was still going. I've Pretty incredible. photographs from uh, some people in British Columbia who, even though the sky was clouded over, they were still seeing yep. the light through the clouds. Oh yeah, we had we had a little bit of cloud here too. You can see that some clouds were working with the aurora, but it kind of made the aurora even better too with the clouds. And then you had the uh, the aurora kind of dancing behind the clouds, so shooting up and stuff. It was pretty incredible. Yeah. Well, do you have show. auroras like that? Do you, do you feel like you're like? Are you just used to it, or do you feel like you're in outer space or something? Like a feel like a space alien or something? You're hearing the like voice right of Pete Galenko, our uh, co one of our uh, meteorologists down in Virginia Beach. And uh, my experience, Peter, is you never get tired of seeing it, especially when the show is great. Today in Saskatchewan, awesome. in uh, Saskatoon, something interesting happened in a school year. 
Yeah, we uh, apparently some moose decided to go right through the window and decided to go to class today. And all the kids had to get out of the classroom because there's a moose in the classroom. And uh, I guess he just sat on the floor and waited till the officials got there. <laughs> he just gave <laughs> all the kids a very big window. Yeah. And so <laughs> I said, I hope you're well educated moose now. <laughs> yeah, he's, the logger said, I hope he learned his lesson. But, uh, you know, that Saskatoon, I mean, it does have that river valley, so it's possible for, uh, and I, I do know that the moose do use those river valleys in, Sask in Saskatchewan to travel up and down. But uh, certainly of all the places in Canada, you'd expect to see a moose turn up in a school. You might suspect somewhere like Prince George or, you know, Dawson Creek or somewhere that's a little bit more into the uh, remoteness of the bush. Uh, so what's, uh, you right now, the uh, warmest place in Canada is in Drumheller, which isn't too far from you. Um, and the coldest is, uh, of course, in Nunavut, minus 26.5 in Eureka. It's finally getting cold in the north. I've seen some graphics this week about uh, the seawater temperature, the, sea, the surface temperatures in Hudson Bay, Brandon. Um, do you have any thoughts about uh, just how warm some of the bodies of water are in uh, many parts of Canada right now? Yeah, definitely. Well, even none of it itself was above average for the month of October, which is uh, pretty unusual for this time of year. So uh, with above average temperatures, that allows seawater level temperatures to be warmer than average as well. So it, yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, a little concerning indeed as we go into the winter months. However, as you looked onto the West Coast, it's cooler than average. That's the typical La Nina pattern setting up and uh, We'll see what that setup is going to bring us, especially as we go through the winter months, because I remember La Nina at least, uh, oh yeah, at least 10 years ago. That was probably the worst winter of my lifetime. I think uh, 4.6 degrees above average in October is what Churchill ended at. And I don't know if we'll see Joe Stover tonight. I'd love to ask him more about that, but uh, hopefully he shows up because uh, some Churchill news has been in the news. And uh, yesterday you had some Chinook arches. And uh, you've been seeing some warmer weather as well in Alberta. What's your projection looking at uh, for next week? Well, actually, uh, before we get to that, we had our uh, actually first uh, significant snowfall last Friday in southern parts of Alberta that uh, ended up as rain in my area. So I stayed warmer throughout the uh, last week. However, in the southwestern corner of the province at Waterton, they got about 10 to 20 centimeters of snow back on Friday. And that snow stuck around for a couple of days. And with the cold snow at the surface and the cold air aloft, that allowed the temperatures to stay below freezing for three days in a row in the southwestern corner of the province. And uh, actually record-breaking lows there earlier this week. Uh, Waterton getting all the way down to minus 25 with wind chills near minus 28 to start the week there. So it got, it got, that got kind of cold, I say. Uh, but things did improve, especially with that new series of storms on the bc coast so we have to thank bc for this warm up of beautiful temperatures where we're sitting at 14 degrees right now i can go out in the shorts and t-shirt again so uh appreciate that but the, the winds have really picked up for our last couple of hours uh, so the winds were kind of going and now they're all settled down again so <laughs> now uh, we don't have winds to be concerned about at this time but they're going to pick back up again as we go through the evening here and then we'll see the uh chinook conditions continue into tomorrow and then we get a uh we have a weak system moving through so there's a chance of freezing rain tonight in northern alberta and fort mcmurray is going to get a bit of snow tonight as well as the system tracks into northern saskatchewan and then we might get a couple showers here and there but temperatures are going to slowly start to cool back down to the seasonal average as we go into next week and then as we carry on throughout next week, looks like we have another system we'll have to watch that uh, will definitely be worth uh, mentioning here with the potential for uh, maybe more snow next week in the middle of the week. We'll watch it. the models have been all over the place with this one, keeping it in the U.S., keeping it up in northern Alberta, or is it going to be in southern Alberta? We're not quite sure yet, but that's weather for you. And just to make uh, it clear to listeners that we are recording the show on uh thursday november 4th in the evening and it will air in uh two days time in prince george and then it will air two days after that in winnipeg so when we say next week for you in winnipeg we mean this week there was a, a crazy freezing rain storm in uh, prince george on tuesday and that uh, resulted in uh vehicles strewn about all over and uh a uh, very interesting start to uh the winter season for them as well i heard about all the freezing rain in prince george and it, so and it sounds like the the city just plunged into chaos and nobody could make it up any hills 
highways were having to close because like trucks were getting stuck. Yeah, it just sounded like a big, messy start to the winter up there. You're hearing the voice of Noel Chaos down in Vancouver. Uh, who I want to go to next, stick with us, Noel, because I will come to you. Uh, I want to jump down to Trey Campbell. He's been waiting the longest. He's down in Houston, Texas. Trey, you're no longer working for ESPN. You found yourself a new job. Yeah, I got a new job about a week later. I now work for the preeminent news station in the city. I work for 740 KTRH down here in Houston. So a lot, I run a lot of news reports and a lot of uh, talk radio that some people don't like. But um, sure. I'm hoping to move to, back to sports here in the future. But yeah, it's going really well. I'm working every day. I'm getting about 35 hours each week. And um, I'm just getting my foot in the door and just kind of going forward. That's excellent news. I guess working at a news station now, you probably have lots of insight as to the weather reports in uh, Houston, Texas, and the surrounding areas. Yeah, it, the, I, I hear it um, twice an hour. Um, I hear <laughs> it at the, at the top of the hour and on the 30s. But, uh, yeah, it's looking like we got a cold front moving through. Uh, right now, the lows, it's its getting to lows of 49 degrees so, um, Fahrenheit, which is ridiculously cold for us down here in oh, Houston. God. That's summer for you guys, but um, yeah, we got a cold <laughs> front coming. And, uh, and yeah, we're just, uh, everybody's wearing their coats and their sweaters, and they're trying not to get hypothermia down here in Houston. So we're managing, though, so. Sounds bitter, 49. <laughs> yeah, a bitter 49 degrees. And um, there's a lot a lot of people that are really, and my mom hates it because, uh, so, you know, but, uh, but yeah. For, for us, for us in Canada, what does 49 translate to? It translates to 9.44444444444444444444 degrees Celsius. Lots of fours. I don't know how many fours. Yeah. Yeah. Nine point infinite fours. It says on Google. So me so like medium cold. I've been working in the wilderness for the last bunch of weeks, and that's that'd be the warmest weather I would have seen if we'd have had a nine degree day. So put that in perspective. Yeah, it's um <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it just goes to show you how crazy the weather is, you know? Uh, Peter Blanco down in Virginia Beach. Like 49 degrees. Uh, if, I know there's polar bears in Canada, but not uh, not down here, obviously. Um, so if a polar bear, like, traveled south to the United States, let's say all the way to Texas or Mexico or something, with a polar bear be just like uncomfortably hot all the time and just be thinking of his head like damn it's way too hot out here or to just like spontaneously die after a few days like how would that work could a polar well, bear think, survive i think even churchill in Manitoba had, had 20 degree days this summer and does so i mean it's something that a polar bear has not seen at some point in its lifetime although uh definitely those uh i always felt bad for the polar bear at the toronto zoo in those 33 degree days it, it looked very unhappy they had nice water to swim in, so that's where they hung out. All right. Well, I guess that's How is the weather in Virginia? Beach? Also have a similar terribly cold weather like Houston. <laughs> and by terribly cold weather, I mean it's, uh, it's a little bit chilly outside by uh, reasonable standards. And you got no hurricanes going but, on at least. Uh, nothing, nothing, too, nothing too eventful. Here comes the story of the hurricane. Frankie, what is going on with the hurricane oh, weather right now? Right now, Wanda's out near Azores Islands right now. The Azores out in the mid-Atlantic. It's a tropical yeah. storm, are we still, and it's dying. Are we still in hurricane storm, season? Wanda. You are definitely still in hurricane season down there. Yeah, no doubt. I figured. Figured we had like another month or so. So watch out, Trey. The final month of hurricane season right yeah. now. Let's pop over to Vancouver and say hi to Noel Chaos. How has he been uh, down in rainy old Vancouver, Rain City? Hey, <clears throat> hey, yeah, it's it's been it's been all right. Uh, it's been pretty wet over the last week. Uh, Halloween weekend was nice. It dried out and the sun came out for everyone to 
celebrate their Halloween festivities. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday were, were like starting to get like kind of cold. Like we got down into single digits. Yeah, but it stayed, it stayed nice and dry. And then we're right back to, to the rain again. Today has been rainy, windy. And then we had a really nice sunset with, with a couple of rainbows that came out. It looks like we're about to get more rain later tonight. Yeah, we're coming into a, a bit of a pattern, I'd say, uh, the Hawaii Express. Atmospheric there. River. The Atmospheric River, the Pineapple Express. So there's pretty much your whole weather wrap from all our meteorologists here on C for 88.7 FM, CKUW 95.9 FM in Winnipeg. Here is the panel of meteorologists, all of us here together. And uh, here's the part of the show where we kind of just talk and say whatever's going on in our lives and whatever comes to our minds. Sometimes with t- shows, so what did everyone do for Halloween? I was carried past my brothers and sisters, my friends, my family. I cried out for rescue, but my kin remained silent and unmoving, perhaps fearing a similar fate. My home began to fade in the distance, and suddenly, everything went dark. Question one. Uh, well, I, I was involved with, with, a, with a cover show at, at a local venue on, on Saturday. And then for Sunday, me and my friend, we, we drove out to Chilliwack and we visited a couple of my friends. And then we watched horror movies at the drive-in theater. When I came to my senses, I saw my abductors had placed me on hard gray earth. I was afraid I had just been left to die. Now I know if I had, I would have been lucky. Were you doing, Joey? I didn't do anything. I uh, was home for a night, and I uh, dimmed all my lights and pretended I wasn't home. That's all I did for Halloween. Uh, I didn't have any kids, so I didn't have to uh, walk around. I didn't have to do anything. I just, and honestly, after after a week out here in the bush, if I can just do nothing, that's pretty good. I mean, uh, I go home tomorrow night, and uh, for example, the last two days, I was telling Brandon earlier uh, before the show, I, I walked two kilometers just to get to where I had to start on the block. And then continue to walk, of course, my lines and grids and everything I'm doing, and then two kilometers out. So that's four kilometers of extra walking the last two days just to get to where I want to start. My legs are pretty tired. Halloween night, couldn't care, which is, you know, unlike me because I love Halloween, but I'm sober now. What am I going to do? Pain was incredible. I became dizzy, nauseated. They had cut a giant hole in my skull and were now tearing my innards from my body and strewing them before me like ribbons from a gift. Moments later, the knives returned, impaling me over and over again. What made those people do what they did that day, I do not know. I began to think they were playing some sort of mad game, especially when they put a really big knife inside me and just sort of waved it around. What did you do, Peter? You're back home, it looks like. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, we weren't back home in time uh, to hand out candy this year, uh, so it wasn't a very... uh, Festive Halloween in that regard. I got to see family in, in Chicago uh, uh, the, the day of Halloween. Uh, we flew back here, so uh, it was uh, and our flight was delayed, so uh, didn't get back until the evening. Talking about walking on that far reminds me uh, real quick. Uh, are there places in Canada where I'm sure maybe rural areas also in the states, but like where there's just the houses are so few and far apart, but like, do 
to kids walk just like miles anyway just like to go to a few houses for walk halloween or like just like their entire halloween is just like walking from their house to like a few other houses and only get a few <laughs> pieces of candy is is that like i think most of the real kids are going to go to the town centers, but certainly if uh, there was anybody out yeah. here where I am, they'd have to, you know, walk about a hundred kilometers to the first house to go trick or treating. Cause that's uh, how far the nearest community yeah. is. That's uh, a reserve. I guess, I guess uh, that's cool. you might get less candy, but it'd be uh... So that's like 50 miles, right? A hundred kilometers. 60. About that. I think it's kilometer. I think it's 1.6 kilometers per like... mile. 2.2 miles or something no yeah, it's 1.6 kilometers equals yeah, you'd one have mile. to start start walking like before for <laughs> before halloween day camp out and then yeah uh, you'd have to you'd have, to, yeah, you'd have like, to probably settle for some november 1st candy like uh you know the hot post halloween candy you know at that point i'd just be like I'd tell my parents just like i'm gonna um, buy some candy at the store. Yeah, just go get one of those big, <laughs> like, uh, party uh, size candy. Packs. And do it Frankie style, dress up and post a video on YouTube. Yeah. Instead of, uh... Apparently, my kids didn't even try. Like, my daughter just put a, a fake police hat on and said, I'm a cop. And my son uh, put a Spider Man mask on. They didn't even try. Oh, I think really? mom was encouraging them, and they, come on, you can. Uh, that's fine. They'll give us candy anyways, Mom. I'm like, those are totally my kids. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. It's life in the life in the mountains, I guess. When the cutting was done, I sat in shock, not daring to think that the torture might be at an end. But of course it was not. They lowered a stick of hot fire into my belly. Burning, burning flame. What sort of uh, Halloween traditions are uh, happened down in Houston, Texas that maybe we wouldn't have heard of? Um, uh, I don't know. It's usually pretty similar. Sometimes people go out and they just kill people, you know, <laughs> that's kind of their, one of the traditions we have, you know, people just go and shoot each other. So that's one of the big ones. But it kind of sounds know. like Texas does that every day. Yeah. Um, also another big one is to go to the rich neighborhoods and uh, trick or treat there get like to to drive to the rich neighborhoods and um yeah that and commit property property damage um you know a lot of you see a lot of property damage um another good one a lot of people like dressing up like football players i see a lot of of uh a lot of deshaun watson uh costumes even though he's probably not the right guy to pick um but yeah it's it's there's it's a city rich with tradition, you know, <laughs> lots of uh, lots of violence and um, lots of costumes of football and astro uh, baseball players. No, the arms race of America. I mean, who needs it? You know, you got an egg. <laughs> yeah, it's um, sometimes you know it, it it gets a little bit hectic down here. Um, I think I think there were um, seven deaths all throughout Halloween weekend from guns, which is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's that's about as much as they get up there in Canada in a, in a year. We got I it. I think maybe in day. Vancouver. I, so, I, Winnipeg, uh, yeah. I just seen today, is uh, declared the most violent city in Canada. It's got 40 murders this year. That's a city of like 800,000 people or a million oh, people, man. something like that. That's a lot of yeah. murder in Canada. 40. That's like yeah, a city that's deteriorating. Yeah, that's you are the champion of killing in Canada. Congratulations. That's got to be quite the honor. If you, if you were one of the listeners, the honor. if any of you listeners out there have actually killed anybody, congratulations for, for getting Winnipeg into that category. We're really proud of you. My captors had carved a gruesome visage into me. As if this was all some kind of demented joke. Who were these sick people and why had they done this to me? Why? 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 Frankie McDonald, what kind of Halloween traditions happen in Sydney, Nova Scotia that people may not have heard of? Even went trick or treating, things like that. And no trick or treating's over at 7.30 in my area. 
No shooting a gun. Fireworks. No ah. guns in my area city, Nova Scotia. Frankie, <laughs> did you get any trick or treaters at your house? Around twenty. You whoa, that's so many trick or treaters. Boy, Frankie, you're popular. They all came can, to your house. Can you imagine getting candy from Frankie McDonald? That'd be so great. Yeah, like trick or treat, and then Frankie comes up. He's like, "Ah, oh, Frankie McDonald, here's some Kit Kats," and then he's just like, hey, "That'd be the best." <laughs> I would trick or treat at Frankie's house if he was handed out cheeseburgers. That would make my day. Yeah, here's fifty steak T-bone dinners, and they just be like giving them that like means, uh, uh, here's fifty tacos. Okay, guys, we're gonna do some guy try see fifty tacos at one store an earthquake. Making tacos now. I want you eat fifty tacos at once. Eat them all right now. <laughs> Oh my god, it's an earthquake! The ground's shaking! The buildings! Oh my god! The groceries are falling! The ornaments are falling! My stomach getting upset! Oh my god, it's an aftershock! I want to eat 50! 10 more tacos! I bear high door an earthquake! Oh my god, power lines are falling! Oh my god, there, another building just collapsed or an earthquake! The earthquake's over now. Thanks for watching, I'm Frankie McDonald. They have to get a PCR test like big bands and things like that. When they travel, do tours and things like that. Big bands have to do a PCR test. Yeah, yeah, big bands. Everybody, um, or proof of vaccination, right Frankie? Yeah. What about the bands? Yeah, the bands have to get, they have to um, be fully vaccinated, I think, to travel up there, Frankie. What about the PCR what? test? They fully vaccinated bands have to get a PCR test as well. Yeah. Yeah. E yeah. Everyone, everyone crossing the border to come up to Canada, they have to, they have to have their proof that they're fully vaccinated and they have to take a COVID test and produce a negative result. What about they the also, bands traveling to Canada? What about the amateur bands or professional bands when they travel to Canada? I think that can't goes bring their for guns. everyone across the board. That means the yeah. record company have to pay money for a COVID test. Yeah, the, re the record companies, they got to pay. They're going to yeah, pay. Yeah, right. They don't yeah. pay. You no. saw a big show lately, didn't you, Trey? Yeah. Um, wait, what happened? You went to see a big show lately, did you not? Oh, yeah, yeah. I went to two concerts this weekend. I went to see a band or a band called Japanese Breakfast. And then I went to see my favorite vaporwave artist, um, George Clinton. Not to be confused with George Clinton of Funkadelic <laughs> fame, but uh, George Clinton. I got to see him. He signed my phone case. I got some videos. It was all around just a great time. So I was glad to get to go to a concert again. A while later, I returned to consciousness and heard someone approaching. A glimmer of hope sprang up inside me. Could these be my liberators, come to save me from this hell? No. It was a parade of tiny demons who stared at my ruined body. I knew then that the reason I had been hacked and disfigured was merely for the entertainment of these demons. They were even receiving some sort of payment from my captors for coming to see me. They tormented me, they mocked me. <laughs> Brandon Houck, what kind of traditional Halloween things happen in Brooks, Alberta that uh, us in Canada may not know about? 
Oh boy. I looks like I'm still celebrating Halloween as half my body is missing here. Um, so yeah, well, well, everybody goes out trick or treating around the city here and, uh, uh, there wasn't much going on this year. We had, uh, I guess they had the, the bandits game. They had, uh, some trick or treating going around there too. So they had that going and, uh, yeah, it was pretty quiet this year. I'd say usually there's some big party going on. Oh yeah. There's, there's always something going on down at the Brooks hotel. There's always a band there and there was costumes and, oh yeah. So uh, that's... The Brooks hotel sounds like a, a folk song. The best yeah. sandwich in the world. Yeah, right I got to say, I had an experience at the Brooks Hotel. Um, I went one time, I was trying to get one of those sandwiches, and they uh, they put it on wheat bread, and I, I didn't want it on wheat bread. So They don't put it on wheat bread. <laughs> I'm never bread. going to the Brooks Hotel again. Alberta's all about the meat. <laughs> yeah, this, I don't know. Uh, I just made something up. And now, now I sit mangled, deformed waiting for the sweet peace of death to arrive. Freedom, 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 freedom. I know we were speaking about Winnipeg earlier. I got to share a funny story from there this week. Uh, as you know, a lot of us have these things called furnaces up here to keep our houses warm in the winter months. And a couple of dudes decided to uh, break into somebody's house in Winnipeg. And they went right down to the basement because these things are usually right in the basement. And they're big. Like they're, uh, they're about the size of a filing cabinet, maybe bigger than that. And they decided they needed to steal the furnace from this person's house. However, one thing they forgot to turn off the gas and as they were trying to take the furnace out, the gas was filling up the room and they ended up passing out after getting hit with gas and <laughs> um, filled up the house and eventually went up to the neighbor's house. So the neighbors smelled a gas smell. And they called officials in to see what, what, what it was. And they believe it was coming out of the neighbor's house. So officials came in, police and fire department, and they found the two guys passed out on the floor beside the furnace that they were stealing. And they were taken for assessment, but they, they're unconscious, but they eventually survived. And now they're walking away, not well, getting really furnace. Lucky. So that was the story this week. Listen to us on 95.9 FM in Winnipeg. CKUW, where uh, today it's Monday for you listeners, and it's eight degrees, probably. Well, we'll see if the weather changes by the time. Uh, but it looks like your forecast starts with a sunny break to the week before showers start coming in by Wednesday. So uh, some minus six at night, possibly on Monday night. You might get some uh, below zero temperatures, Winnipeg, through next week. But uh, all in all, you're in a sunny break this last few days. And look who showed up to the show. We haven't seen him for a few weeks. Down in southern Ontario, GB yeah. Gabriel, the rap and weather man. How you doing there, buddy? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, you know. I mean, like, the reason I think why I didn't really get to join the last few shows is that, like, look, I was either at my dad's house where, where, I, where I actually didn't have all my suits at or, like, my setup at that I have here uh, or, or I just forgot. But today... Today I obviously am, am on the uh, show, half an hour late, fashionably late actually. But punk time, uh, <laughs> you showed up at punk time. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I mean, the weather been pretty uh, uh, cold, maybe not like too, too, too cold, but uh, kind of in uh, kind of in the six to maybe eight degree, like you know range maybe i mean uh uh there've actually been uh a lot of snow coming off the lakes recently here on there've um there's uh been all these squalls kind of moving in uh uh dumping like a lot of like snow there uh not exactly sure how much but well uh, uh based on the photos based on the of course you know captions also too people are actually like posting over like 15 centimeters of it or like 
20 centimeters of snow just in like just in like two or three days of these squalls uh, uh moving right and uh, these are these are like mainly off the here on like shores so i mean like nowhere i mean uh i mean it's really local i should say so i mean not of course everybody has seen this yet i mean we haven't we haven't even seen our first snowfall here exactly uh, but uh other of course you know areas have already seen like a, a lot of early. snow kind of there for yeah. ontario <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, i do recall uh, i mean i mean 1996 november 9th we had a good snow that year growing up and uh it pretty much stayed where i lived uh because i you know grew up north of seven you know 100 kilometers north of belleville or whatever right and uh so it's a snow belt there but i do recall like that year being like wow november 9th it's winter it's here and then, then so many years after that uh you know oh, christmas yeah, yeah. time you know is a, a hit or miss are we actually gonna have snow and most years we did but it, th those questions when's the last time you did a weather wrap weeks and weeks and weeks ago but i don't have one ready for the show uh uh sadly as much as you guys would like me to um <laughs> but i mean uh probably probably uh for like the next show i'm Sorry uh, uh, to all my fans out there and especially everybody on the, uh, you know, show that uh, I haven't actually planned one, planned one out for like the last few weeks at all. Um, I've actually, of course, been uh, doing some on, on the, uh, what is it again? Shuli's like show with Trey, of course, you know, knows about it, but. Uh, you rapping on Shuli's uh, show? <laughs> you got nothing yes, for me? Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, yes, no, 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 so, 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 so. I was also, I was also watching like the Leafs too, and that big, like, big, wasn't like, that a game? comeback from like the Leafs? Dude. It was. It wasn't me. Not. Well, I, mean, I, I, I was listening on the radio because like the internet's left. so the internet's so slow here that trying to stream a game is kind of hit or miss, and even these Zoom calls, I'm surprised that the connection's good enough here. But so I was listening to on the Leafs Radio Network. Of course, I love listening to Joe Bowen and Jim Ralph. They're like the best hockey announcers oh, in yeah. history. So colorful. And like, and just the way Joe Bowen speaks, too, it's like, and Tavares, the long pass. He's, he's going to say long. He's got to say long pass. You know, just, Yo, just yeah, everything yeah, about how yeah, Joe yeah, Bowen calls a game. I just love it. And it's like 47 <laughs> seconds left in the game. Leafs tie at 1 1. And then, uh, fantastic overtime finish and then I'm, I all mean, the concern about I the mean, Leafs not I being mean, good look, this year i think it's starting to vanish pretty quickly we got a goalie in jack campbell right? know, it, people are people were also concerned about the raptors also but i mean like they on um, they on um, they now exactly have like their fifth or like six i think win in a row i think it's like their fifth like straight like win in a row um I still don't think and the raptors was, are that good to be honest okay 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 look you don't really like, have to think they're good but at least they're not losing those five games right it would have right. it would be it would be much worse if they would have lost those brandon helps uh Sorry of course works for uh 105.7 fm the country station and and Br uh, brooks and he's been uh producing the hockey games for uh, their local hockey, hockey team the brooks bandits and they're now 15 game win streak brandon 15 wins in a row and we are number one in the country all of canada <laughs> That's an incredible uh, run they're on, and they uh, yeah, defeated and the Wolves last night. Yeah, they defeated Old nine to one, and then they defeated the other team like eight to one, eight to three. Uh, we're playing. Uh, who are playing tomorrow night? We're playing uh, Drum Heller tomorrow night. The only team that beat them this year. So, so what? Wow. What exactly is in the water supply of Brooks, Alberta? That's uh, turning hockey players into machines. Well, I should say. Um, there is a player on the Colorado Avalanche called Kale McCarr, and he played yep. in Brooks Band. And uh, if you've seen him play, he is incredible. So I think he's up for uh, playing in the Olympics as well uh, coming up. And then we have another player going to the Columbus Blue Jays. Uh, uh, Carson Kuhlman's keeping an eye out for him too. Uh, he's going on the Columbus Blue Jackets. And then uh, Kale's brother, Taylor McCarr, has got drafted into the Colorado Avalanche as well this year. So. Yeah, we've got, I think, almost the whole team should be playing in the NHL. I mean, Alberta is a, wow, a province that nice. makes hockey players. I mean, a lot of great hockey players come. I know when I lived in uh, Nanton, Alberta, and I played on the Nanton Big Dogs plumbing team, uh, we were 
kind of just a bunch of beer drinking guys, but occasionally I'd be in the rink and watch uh, the Nanton's regular team play. And just like looking at these kids that are 18 years old, the way they shot, I was like, oh my God, we're, how, how can you have a shot like that at 18? I mean, I mean, just, to, I mean, uh, they're like hockey players going on. Big yeah. hockey trade today. Jack Eichel traded to the Vegas Golden Knights. Oh yeah. Big, oh yeah. Yeah. I heard about that when I was actually yeah. watching TSN. Yeah, so Eichel's, got, Eichel's suffering is coming to an end. Yeah. The Buffalo Sabres continue their, um, their path of, the, of ineptitude. There was a dispute on whether or not Eichel should get a certain replacement surgery for his herniated disc. They wanted spinal fusion surgery. He said no. So they got him out of there. He's in Las Vegas now. So and I just have to impress upon you as a Leaf fan, the all-time, of course, they're in the same division, right? All-time record, 100 Sabres, 117 wins. Maple Leafs, 83. Ties, 18. Oh, okay. 117, so that, so 74, and 27 overall. So, I mean, this is a team that has beaten the Leafs like crazy in my lifetime. And uh, now that they've had a good <laughs> run of 10 years of just being really terrible, it just brings me so much joy. And it brings me joy to see the Montreal Canadiens just really suffering and saying goodbye to that playoff hope by Halloween. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Sam. All right, enough sports talk. Any um, any major any major deaths today? Anybody famous die of note? No, sh- Sean Connery died yesterday. Um, yeah, he's uh, he died yesterday, one year ago. So uh, thoughts and former prayers. governor of Delaware died. Ruth Ann Manor, minor, Thanks. eighty-six years old. Oh, actually, my condolences to uh, former governor of Delaware, who is dead today. Let's I see, see Neil Diamond trending on yep. Twitter. And uh, he's still alive. And then yesterday I seen uh, yep. a Rolling Stones uh, guitarist trending, and I knew he was okay. Keith Richards yeah, ain't dying. I never, no, no, no. Yeah, he'll probably survive the new kill, uh, nuclear apocalypse. Yeah, he's, he's a like cockroach. A, a musical the former cockroach. president Bill Clinton, he's still alive. Yeah, Bill That's Clinton almost dead, but uh, he's still alive. Um, yep, Bill Clinton. Okay, Funny what? story. <laughs> almost dead? What does that mean? Almost dead. Uh, like, like, a, like your brain dead. That was a know, close like call for dead. him. Yeah, was, oh, been dead in the oh, soul for a long oh, time. Crap. Yeah, uh, funny PC story. Premier John Morgan has throat cancer. Oh man! But he's still Shut alive. Up. Thoughts and prayers. Uh, he's still kicking. But uh, here's my funny story about uh, Bill Clinton. I actually have a picture of my uncle shaking his hand on my wall, and. Um, Nobody really knows why it's there, but, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to Bill Clinton and all of his uh, and friends. His, yeah, uh, shout out to him and his NAFTA policies. Bill Clinton, not dead. That's, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I personally don't Queen like Elizabeth the guy. Elizabeth II is still alive. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's been alive for a long time. and That's, she, she, is, she drinks uh, the blood of children. Not gonna... <laughs> yeah, Queen <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, actually the very first person in the world to receive a COVID vaccine. So shout out with Santa Claus, Frankie. Santa Claus is up in North Pole. Wasn't he the first one to get his COVID shot? Yes, and Santa Claus is the first one to get a booster too. Yeah, he just was Santa Claus then the queen. (laughs) I don't understand though, because usually when Santa Claus is on his sleigh, he's not around other people. He's just going into he's. Nobody's ever around Santa Claus. So I don't yeah, he's still he's coughing all over your house. Danger. The guy the smokes elves are, the out his elves lungs. Are. If you infect one of his elves, millions of them, bro. Oh, my God. Who knows what's going to happen there? But hopefully think- that the elves all have their shots. Because if they don't, then you know what's going to happen. A massive outbreak Christmas in the shutdown. North Pole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas canceled. Yeah. Christmas Big over. Christmas shutdown oh. everywhere. That when you spend a lot of time in the smoke, you spend a lot of time coughing. And you got that Santa Claus going up and down and going into people's, you know, chimneys. And he's in that little creosote and smoke. And he's ah, coughing, hacking. He's smoking a pipe. The guy's got gross lungs, okay? So, I mean, the last thing you need is Santa Claus coughing around your house. Get that guy yeah, back. definitely not. He just built I'm, different. Yeah, Trey knows a little bit about Santa Claus because he's actually, a, he's actually a cousin of Santa's, I think. Is that not that true? That is true. Me and... 
me and old say he comes to thanksgiving he came to thanksgiving a lot before everybody kind of dispersed um but yeah santa claus uh not necessarily a close family friend but definitely a relative so um yeah me and, as you can tell we have similar facial structures um i don't quite have the beard like santa but we are indeed related so shout out to old cousin it. saint nick I think you got a job yeah. in the future got, at the mall you when you're ready. Career path, yeah. And when I retire, when I retire from running the board and making sure the the people of Houston, Texas, get their Sean Hannity fix, I'll be I'll be um I'll be going <laughs> straight to the mall Santaing. Yeah, Santa you're producing and, and say you need a job. <laughs> yep, yep, it's yep, old Sean Hannity. He, oh he's boy. told me about. 126 times about microclonal antibodies. So, oh boy! Um, I've heard. I've got the. I've got the full-on Hannity experience. Is he so. uh, nice or totally weird? Like maybe you can't say that. But no I've, one listens I've to the never show. met him. I've never okay. met. I've never. I've never met him. He does his show from New York City. Um, I don't do a lot of live. Sh- well, I, they're live, but I. They're broadcasted through a satellite, and they simulcast on our station so basically like that's yeah i just do that from three to eight and then you know but i'm trying to get to sports so as soon as i get to sports i'll be a little bit more um happier of my career but you'll be able to live with yourself and sleep at night yeah (laughs) yeah that i've been having a hard time sleeping my cat has decided that neither one of us should sleep at night. Yeah, mine will meow every now and again, but he's he doesn't he doesn't do that as much as he used to. So. <laughs> yeah, you, you, pro- you probably saw mine like walk across the, the screen a couple of times earlier. Yeah, the only cat yeah, we've yeah, seen out a- here is a lynx. I saw last week. A lynx tray is like a a large northern version of a bobcat. Basically, oh, they got okay. they got snowshoes yeah. for hands. Uh, they they walk on snow like nothing, and uh, you know they could be thirty yeah. to fifty pounds. They're somewhat of a large cat, and uh, they have these tufts of hair in their ears yeah. and these, and face that's really big. I mean, I mean, I am a bobcat. I got kind of they got the the tufts of hair in the side, and they're they're absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and uh, I'm lucky enough to see lynx and bobcats uh, generally several times a year out here. And I know it's one of the things that uh, they just never seen a lynx before. It, they're such an elusive animal, and uh, I feel very lucky that I get to be in the forest enough that I, I had these experiences. This week, uh, you might have seen I had a close encounter with a grouse, and I made friends with a raven. You can see videos of that on my YouTube channel, Joey Only Caribou Weather Dude. Have you seen any cougars yet? The last cougar I seen was in uh, Quinell. Didn't talk to her. But I did see one in. Uh, I knew that was coming. Did see one in uh, Clearwater this spring briefly. Uh, just, I mean, I've seen its ass end go into the forest, and because I've been in the woods long enough, I knew exactly what I'd just seen. Somebody else may have seen the same thing and been like, "What was that?" Because I, you know, didn't get a, a proper view of it. But it, nothing else has that back, that tail, hmm. and moves that way. So I knew right away, I just seen a cougar bounding into the forest as I was coming down the forest road, forest service road. Have you seen any ibexes? We don't have ibexes here. They do have antelope in the prairies. We don't have antelope here. We have, uh, here in this area, I mean, we have uh, mountain caribou. We got moose. Deer, not so much. They don't tend to, uh, the only that don't tend to hang out in the same region so much. So if there's a lot of moose in one area or a lot of uh, caribou or something, the deer don't generally... And, the, you know, for good reasons, too, they, they share diseases and whatnot as well. So you will find uh, – I haven't seen much evidence of a lot of deer here, lots of evidence of moose. Um, definitely grizzly bears in this forest and black bears as well. I'm sure wolverines would be found, but you'll never see them ever. They're very elusive and uh, not at all the vicious animal people think they are, although uh, they do have the ability to back it up if they want to. I mean, there's nothing tougher in the forest than a wolverine, but uh, they're, they're a very – shy creature really they like to hang out uh, especially in avalanche zones in the mountains and uh when some unsuspecting stupid animal gets uh, smashed by an avalanche uh wolverines right there to dig them up and uh in the past uh they've actually trained wolverines 
to use to locate humans buried in avalanches. The idea being as long oh, as wow. you can uh, as long as you can get to the human Crazy. when the wolverine finds them before the wolverine eats them. Do you have any pets, uh, Joey, up there? I have a cat, but it's uh, at my house in Wells, which is about 300 kilometers from where I am right now. I will see him tomorrow night. He'll be quite happy, I'm sure. I'll get my kids back. I'll see them. They'll be happy. Everyone's going to be happy. Meanwhile, yeah, you know, my whole life... a full, happy house. Well, my life this year has been, uh, you know, work. And uh, besides, the, like, the radio show is my one sort of outlet socially. I'll come out of camp, and the first thing that will happen is the kids will get dropped off at my work. From there, we'll go to Wells, and I'll have them all weekend. I have no love life. So I'm a Joey only solo character out in the wilderness. Wait, uh, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, like your last, I think, name says it all, right? Only I means like you're like the only, like you're Joey only. <laughs> you know what? I'm just joking. Joey. <laughs> just well, that's, yeah. that's where it comes from, man. Just Joey. Just Solid Joey hand. only. Only Joey. Yeah, that only. <laughs> that Sorry. that start that started because you you started using it as your stage name, didn't it? Well, no, it, it came through other... I'll have to tell that whole story sometime, but uh, I think November 26th, it'll be 19 years that I've been known as Joey Only, and that came about because uh, I was at a Woodward squat rally yelling through a megaphone about poverty and people freezing to death and all that kind of stuff in Canada, and then uh, a Vancouver province uh, photographer and reporter came up and said, uh, we took a great shot of you doing this speech. Can we have your name? And I said, it's Joey. And they said, well, we need your whole name. And I said... It's just Joey. I'm like, well, can you please? And she's like, starts following me and like actually harassing me. And I was getting annoyed. So I turned and said, it's Joey only. And then so the next day, like the front page of uh, the province section, <laughs> there was this picture of me yelling through a megaphone with a banner behind me, preparing the general strike and all these degenerates and leftists and radicals and taking over the streets in Vancouver and this big crowd. I'm yelling just at. And, Joey. And it says Joey oh, only. Joey. Everyone's Joey. saying uh, that morning, Joey only, as I was walking down the street. And, uh, all right. And then uh, I got offered a gig. Wow. What a- and uh, so, uh, okay, I'll go open for the Flying Folk Army and play with them. And then uh, they put my name in the poster as Joey only. And uh, I've been Joey only ever since. Frankie was on with the Trailer Park Boys this week and uh, on TikTok. And that's a big sensation. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to have to throw that in the show. I actually saw that. Everyone saw that. I actually saw that. Frankie, what are you doing this week for... Uh, on Twitter the- is at Frankie Mc... I got an interview with the Gary and Dino show Saturday night. On Sunday, I got an interview with Jason Marshall. We don't have cookies. Roger the Wild Charles show has come back. And Trey came on Sunday. Plus, my social media, is, my Twitter is at Frankie McD. My Facebook is Frankie McDow. My Instagram is Frankie McD. My Twitter is Frankie McD. And my TikTok is Frankie McDow. 1984, my clap is Frank Down. 1984, my satire is Frankie MCDON. And my t- Twitch is Frankie McDonald, 1984. And my LinkedIn is Frankie McDonald. My YouTube channel is Dogs and Wolves. All the Frankie McDonald you can <laughs> want right there. Thanks for coming on the show this week, guys. Any last words? All right. Best of luck to you. I'm Frankie McDonald. You're listening to the Comedian Meteorological Report with Joel Yoli. I'm Frankie McDonald. <laughs>